What's up, students? Today, let's look at an inclined plane with some theta, a box sitting on that inclined plane. But as a continuation from the last one, today we will talk about this box having friction. All right. And we can look at whether this box is moving at A, a constant speed, which is glorious, or if this box is accelerating. Okay, so we're gonna look at examples of both of these. Now, if you didn't see my video when the box has no friction, you might wanna go back and look at that. I'll link it in the card below and then come back to this. But we have to remember from that last lesson that a box on an incline always has three vectors associated with it. It always has a weight. It always has a force down the incline that we call FG parallel. It always, is going to have a force of the normal. These are gonna be there whether there's friction, no friction, regardless. Today, all we're gonna do is we are gonna add a force of friction. Now, what friction is, is friction just opposes motion. Okay, it hurts velocity, so it's always going to be in the opposite direction. And when we look at the, um, the direction of motion, the dom, as I call it, the dom is going to be going down the incline. So even though there's friction, the box is still going to be going down the incline. So I'm going to call this direction positive with the direction of motion. And anything opposed it, I'm going to call that negative. And we are going to see that right here, opposing this box, the thing keeping this box from wanting to slide down the incline is this friction, okay? So as we remember, the force of friction is gonna be equal to mu times the force of the normal. So that's a little bit of review. If you're not sure what that means, this mu is how these two surfaces interact, how slippery or rough, right? Because we can't put slippery or rough into a formula, so we have to give it a number. This mu just means how slippery or rough, and this force of the normal we can solve from our old review, this is mg, cos keeps it close, theta, fg is just our traditional mg, and then fg parallel is gonna be the component of weight mg, sine makes it slide down the incline. So these are gonna be all the forces that are acting on a box that's sliding down an incline with friction. Now we don't know yet if it's gonna move at a constant speed or accelerating. That's gonna be determined by a couple of different things. But once we have these four, now we can use Newton's second law and we can solve for this acceleration equals F net over M, all right? So first things first, we draw a free body diagram, and then we are gonna go back to Newton's second law, and we are gonna do this. Now remember, the F net, guys, is the F net in the direction of motion. That's super, super important. I see so many students, they start to plug in this force of the normal here when solving for F net in the direction of motion down the incline, and we can not do that, okay? So let's first look, if I have an example of uh, constant speed, like I said, constant speed, guys, is the most glorious thing that we could ever have in physics. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna draw these boxes with this weight, FG. We have the sign makes it slide. We have coast keeps it close. And now we're gonna have this force of friction. Now. At a constant speed, we have to remember some things. Constant speed, it doesn't tell us the box is stopped because you can be moving at a constant speed. Stopped is also constant speed, but what it means really is that the acceleration equals zero meters per second squared, which tells me something awesome because if A equals F net over M and A is equal to zero F net, then has to be equal to zero newtons. So by knowing this right here, we know that F net in the DOM has to be equal to zero newtons. So when I solve for that, and I look for F net in the direction of motion, I can say, all right, well, what is the direction of motion? Well, this right here is the DOM, right? 
So we have some positive information this way and anything going this way is going to be negative. So in the direction of motion, this doesn't even matter. And either does this. The only thing that's going to matter is this FG parallel minus FF because that's going in the opposite direction. And because this is all equal to zero Newtons, I can now say that FG parallel is just equal to the force of friction. Now that is incredible because it does not matter what no numbers you have. If we say mg sine theta, that's going to equal the force of friction or which is also equal to mu mg cosine theta where this was fn remember mg cosine theta so this guys you can plug in any numbers that you want this is how we solve for any of these variables depending on what's given when the box is moving at a constant speed we don't need m total we don't need the full formula because of this right here this makes things amazing Okay, now, but if it is accelerating, right? If you are told, like, they tell you that there is some acceleration on the incline, it's going to be the same exact problem, okay? I'm still going to have theta. I'm still going to have a box, right? This box is still going to have FG parallel. It's still going to have FN because every box on an incline has these three. It has the force of friction, but now, A does not equal zero meters per second squared. So now we're going to have to use A equals F net over M. And this is still, guys, in the DOM, the direction of motion. Okay, super important. So still, even though the box is accelerating, this force doesn't matter and this force doesn't necessarily matter. All we care about is this DOM. All right, so let's solve. If we looked at A equals F net, we have FG parallel minus FF divided by M total. Now we could expand this out depending on the variables given. We could say A equals MG sine makes it slide theta minus mu MG cosine theta. And that is FN is equal to MG cos theta, and we know that the force of friction equals mu Fn from our previous units. All of that, guys, is going to be divided by M. I can clean this up mathematically just a little bit. We see that this and this can be factored out to cancel with that, and we come up with an expression for a box sliding down an incline with friction of A equals G times sine theta minus cosine theta. And depending on what you're given, guys, you can solve for all of this right here. On the AP level, G will be given as 10 meters per second squared. On some other level, you might see G equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. That all just depends on what class you're taking. And that is it, that is how you solve for the acceleration of a box sliding down an incline with friction. Any other questions or topics you'd like me to discuss, just leave them down in the comments below. Have an awesome day, guys.